Praise the Lord, my name is John Nathan Awara. I coordinate scripture union work in Northern Uganda. That is actually Anlango. I'm so blessed to be part of this shoot today. Today, I'm talking about types of pastors. I was having a conversation with a man of God, whose name I will not mention, out of frustration, because I realized that in this ministry of scripture union, of reaching out to children, young people and families, there are block, blockages. There are people that block. So in one of those times, I was so frustrated because men of God, people that I respect, people whom I thought are really men of God, who should be pro the gospel, who should be saying this is the right thing to do, which is preaching the word of God, were the ones blocking the outreach to children, to young people and families. These are pastors, both in the Anglican church, in the Roman Catholic church, in the Pentecostal churches. And I had questions. Why would a pastor, why would a man of God block outreach, block mission? When you have explained to them why you're there, when you have explained to them why you have come to do what you've come to do. So I was expressing my anger and bitterness to this powerful man of God. And this man of God sat me down and said, let me explain to you. There are four types of pastors. When I mean pastors, I'm not talking about only, only in the Pentecostal churches. No, I'm talking about shepherds of the word of God, shepherds of the people of God, people that shepherd God, God's people, people that oversee the, uh, the, the, the congregations. And he shared with me four types of pastors. The first one I'll share with you are pastors who are forced by their parents and friends to become pastors. They are forced. They don't have any other option. They're just forced to go and become pastors. In fact, their parents tell them, you, you are going to be the first priest in our home. You go. You, you are going to be the first pastor in our home. You go and study. You're going to be the first reverend. Go and study and be a reverend. So they are forced by their parents. They are forced by their friends. They are forced by their relatives to go and become pastors. That is the first category. These are guys who have no heart for ministry because they were forced into it. They have no heart for God's work. They will do anything to frustrate anything which is above them. Anything that does not involve them making decisions directly, they will frustrate it. These are pastors. The first category, pastors who are forced by parents and relatives and friends to go and study or to go and become pastors, or they are just forced in to become a pastor. Now, you, you are a pastor's son, you must become a pastor. You, you are, you are, come and join me. You, you just come and become a pastor also. You become a youth pastor. Become a youth pastor in this ministry. They are forced to become pastors. That's the first category. The second category he shared with me is pastors who are opportunists. They have failed in every other area of life. And they want to use the church to get somewhere else. They're opportunists. They have failed in education probably. They have failed in making money. They have failed in relationships. They have failed everywhere. So they use the church as an opportunity to get where they're supposed to get. These are the ones who will frustrate ministry. If they're not decision makers, you're in problems. They don't want anyone else to lead. No, no, it's them. And I thought I should share this because some of us, we have been caught in this situation. And you're an opportunist. God didn't call you. You're an opportunist. You're using the body of Christ to get what you didn't get somewhere else. To get what you didn't get in school. To get what you have not gotten with your own hands. So you become a pastor as an opportunist. Or oh, because you've seen funding coming, You've seen funding coming. You've seen uh, some bazungu, some white people, or you've seen some government officials 
as part or have come the part of the church or they come to that particular church. So you say, I think I need to go and train or I need to join pastoral ministry. That is being an opportunist. That is the second category. The third category, the third category are pastors who are called by God. These ones, God calls them. They are sure. They may not know how to go about it, but they're sure God has called them to be pastors, to shepherd God's people. That's the third category. God calls them. God speaks to them. Or God uses somebody to speak to them. And then they are sure God has called them. They may have challenges here and there, but they stand firm. These are the people whom you will go to and share an evangelistic idea and they will come. They will panel beat it and make it better. These are people, you tell them, I have this for discipleship. They will welcome it. They will tell you, let me pray about it. They will panel beat your idea. They will sit with you, give you audience. You want rich children, they will work, they will help you. They will open doors for you. You want rich young people, they will be there for you. These are those who are called. God has called them and they are sure and they know it that even if they're going to school to study theology, even if they're going to school to study, even if they're going there for a certificate, for a bachelor's, even if it's not even studying, but they're going to school or they're pastoring a church, they have the calling of God upon them. These kind of pastors flourish. Everything they touch is blessed. Everything they get their hands to do flourishes. When they speak, they speak the word of God with power. They speak the word of God with humility. When they receive missionaries, they're not looking for anything for personal gain. These are pastors who are called by God. Category number four. There are those pastors who are called by Satan to destroy the church from within. Satan cannot penetrate the church from the outside. So what does he do? He comes inside. He raises somebody from within to destroy the church. You find someone, instead of gathering sheep, they're scattering the sheep. And there are many of these, by the way. They cause war between Christians. They get information from here and take here. Get from here, take here. Talk about this Christian to this one. Those are, those are, they have been called by Satan to destroy. Remember the church is a place of unity because the body of Christ is solid. I remember Paul is writing to the Corinthians and saying, at, I think to the Ephesians, and he's saying, this hand, this hand, this, the eyes, the head, all are part of one body. That's how the church is. So the only way to destroy the body is to have a disease enter. You've tried accidents, it has failed. What do you do? Ensure malaria comes from inside to kill the body. These kind of pastors are the malaria. They are the diseases that work from within to destroy the body of Christ. The four types of pastors. But let me assure you, Jesus has said, because it is his body, he said, I will build my church on you, the rock, and no gates of hell, no authority from Satan, no authority from the devil will succeed against it. That is the underlying, underlining scripture for me. That is the underlining authority. That even if the devil comes to destroy the church from within, they cannot, the devil cannot, no demon can manage to fight the church because the church is the body of Christ. So if you're a pastor and you're watching this, where do you belong? Are you sure God called you? Or you're an opportunist? Or you're called by Satan to destroy the church from within? Or you were forced? If you are the three, among the three, you were forced by your parents or relatives, you were called by Satan to destroy the church from within, or you are an opportunist. Jesus will deal with you. The earlier you 
stop it, the better for you. Now, if you're called by the devil, you might not even know that the devil has called you. And that's why you need to pray and seek God. So if you're already in ministry and you haven't understood whether God has called you, ask him, ask him, God, have you called me to shepherd or I am supposed to be serving as an usher? I would rather serve as an usher than serve as a pastor when I'm not called to pastor. I would rather serve as a keyboard player. I would rather serve as a driver of the church van than serve as a pastor when I'm not called to pastor. Because you're an opportunist. So the earlier you figure out, the better for the church, the better for the body of Christ, but also the better for you. Because Jesus will destroy anything that must destroy his body. Four types of pastors. This was shared to me, again, by a man of God. So I'm only re-echoing what this man of God shared with me. God bless you.